I'm excited to be here at JuliaCon. Uh, this is a really uh, unique and uh, awesome opportunity. Many people in my field haven't moved to using Julia yet, so this is a really nice um, way to meet people in different areas. Cool. Um, yeah, like like we just mentioned, I'm a PhD student. Um, I'm currently in my fourth year. I work in an area called neuroeconomics, which uh, intersects with experimental economics, uh, cognitive neuroscience, and cognitive psychology. Yeah. Uh, um, I just want, and I'm going to tell you about our Julia package here. I just want to give a shout out to our, our primary maintainer. He really is a, um, I, when I joined the team, I uh, have a lot of thanks for Chris. He, uh, so I just want to give him a shout out here. And this QR code takes you to our repo. All right, so this crowd is quite broad, so I just want to give a kind of little broad introduction of the things I'm interested in. I'm interested in this class of models, this class of generative models called cognitive models, and really what they do are just specifying parameters that have particular uh, psychological interpretations that we use to describe uh, behavioral data, primarily um, amongst various organisms, and I'm interested in humans a lot of the time. Uh, a question that I might work on in decision making is um, how people evaluate uh, these options, right? So how you choose between food options. And then I'm uh, interested in the, the various uh, relevant processes that, that are at work while you evaluate these goods. Um, and the output of that would be something like uh, the speed to which you would respond uh, when choosing um, these op options. And indeed, in, in my area, in cognitive neuroscience, uh, there, there's this general class of decision making models that are uh, attempt to capture the distributions for response times uh, amongst some set of alternatives. And uh, we see that as really the gold standard. So what, just to give you some uh, intuition about what these models do, um, uh, they tend to s look something like this, where you start with some, with some predisposition or some set starting point, right? It could be parameterized here with K, and then you're going to sample some, like, this is an abstraction, right, of evidence over time, and you might call it new. Uh, and that's to some bound, right? And uh, the, that could be alpha here. And we also have to account for time to just encode stimuli, as well as to execute some motor output. So that can be characterized by uh, tau here. Additionally, um, you, you all options, or in, at least in this specification here, are going to have some kind of uh, evidence. So there might be competing evidence in here. And you can see how each one of these parameters have a, a various uh, dissociable uh, components related to the psychological processes underlying the decision. Um, and then th these are then captured uh, in these distributions. And they're used quite pervasively throughout the literature. Uh, they're used to study uh, humans, of course, as I mentioned, and monkeys, and mice, and um, even zebrafish in some application. <laughs> Uh, and fundamentally, uh, many of these models are just uh, stochastic processes, uh, and we're interested in that first hitting point, right? Uh, this um, time to some bound, right? And uh, though they're they're not limited to the con the, con the continu continuous formulation of the stochastic process. Uh, as I mentioned, though, there's a, a wide range of these, and they vary uh, as like as a function of how much uh, evidence might be competing with, with one another, as well as uh, the type of re response you might be interested in, which could be discrete or it could be something more continuous. Um, and th they also try to atten attempt to characterize different uh, other cognitive processes, such as um, how attention might change or vary the drift as a function of time. And, so. right. and you know, out of the box, uh, people might go and simulate these SDEs. Um, if, you're, if you're in my area, you might simulate them using something like Euler's method, uh, or you, you, might you might have uh, closed form solutions for the, the probability density functions for the first hitting time or the stochastic process. But all of that can be uh, quite uh, compl complex or complicated for people in cognitive psychology. And so uh, a, a lot of work has been done to develop interfaces for simulating from this cl these classes of models. Uh, and yet there's yet to be any interfaces for simulating from these models in Julia. And so that's what um, sequential sampling models.jl aims to do. It's uh, to provide this um, one-stop shop, <laughs> really, for simulating from, from these models. Uh, and uh, really what it builds on is it builds on the distribution JL, uh, and it creates an, uh, an abstract type to which uh, we develop these uh, set of constructors to where we can sample from uh, using distribution JL methods. And what's nice about that is that you can not only use a, 
sample from them, but you can, if you have closed form solutions for the likelihoods, you can also uh, incorporate it with uh, Turing, uh, which is of interest to people in my field because we like to do parameter estimation for these generative models. So I'm just going to give you an example then of using the package. Right? So here it's, uh, it's on the registry, so you can just use it outside of the box. And here I'm just defining a model. So this is a constructor for one of those um, popular models in my area, and then I'll output a set and well, I'll show this little table that gives you the parameters and the fixed values you defined. And then you can just call um, methods like this. So you can, and it will output the choice and response times from that, that generative fixed set of parameters. We also developed a, uh, some uh, plotting functions that give you these nice uh, response time distributions for the choice pro um, for e each of the and alternatives, right? As well as um, will give you some of the simulated traces for th some set of simulations from that generative model. Uh, it also works uh, for with Turing. So here I'm just showing a, a little example um, using the model macro right, to specify, um, in this case, the LBA, and then just sample it and show you can get recovery for the parameters for this model. Some developments that we're interested in, we're interested in continuing to expand the the suite of models available. So like I showed before, there's a, there's a large range of these models. Um, so let us know if you want one included. That's not there yet. Also, uh, as I kind of hint alluded to, there are some uh, instances where we don't have closed form uh, like likelihoods. Uh, and so we would like to still s sample from these in an efficient manner using uh, a probabilistic programming language like Turing. So one solution might be to use some of these uh, amortized inference techniques, uh, which could be built with Flux and then still sampled with um, Turing, so if you're interested or, or an expert in Flux, come talk to me. Also, because this package is built for um, the sub people's substantive uh, researchers in my area, right, it's, it would be nice if it's uh, intuitive and easy to use. So we'd like to create uh, also a build on Turing uh, GLM so that you can sample from these models using some kind of specification like this, where you can have uh, your parameters as a function of some set of conditions, um, just making it easier for the user. So thanks again, and here's a link to the repo. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Yeah, appreciate it. Do we have any question from the audience? Hi. Have you considered using the SciML uh, what's it called interface for, for example, stoch stochastic solving in order to do these simulations? I don't know if that, that's even a possibility, but it, I would imagine so, right? Because it's like pretty much optimized for those kind of problems. Uh, n no, so many of the, uh, the constructors that I showed, they do have uh, like, um, analytical solutions for the PDF, um, so we don't have to do that in those cases. In the instance that I showcased that um, the Euler's method for the SDE, it was just kind of to, to show for in instances we we didn't we haven't looked into SciML yet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the talk, Keontae. Um I had a question. I don't know if this really applies to your work, but I've been thinking a lot about the running interface discussion that's kind of been going through the conference a bit, and I guess this is a really interesting t idea where you've got all of these different Sequential, st sorry, sequential sampling models. Was that right? Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about as you're extending them and adding more about you know kind of abstracting that problem and or have you already made some some work towards that? Yeah, the wor the workers here really is the the set of abstract types that we have defined here uh, that we use to define the constructors. Um, I haven't thought uh, to uh, I guess in the same way about how they, they might be thinking about interfaces, but I think there's a talk later today that, uh, that I hope to go to, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>